um, did Bethesda. Yeah! And, yeah! Excuse me, can you maybe just like keep it down for a second? <clears throat> yeah! Does someone pay you to be this noisy? I'm not even saying anything of interest. <laughs> that was the worst E3 conference I have ever seen. Ever. I, I mean, at least since back in the days when E3 was all about dancing on the stage and musical numbers and like TV and music and movies and all this stuff was thrown into it and it wasn't about the games. Like, ever since that we've moved more into a gaming direction with these E3s, which is what they actually should be about. This one from Bethesda is by far the worst since then. And I think it might even be worse than those because it was actually all about games. It was just very boring, and half of it was mobile games. Bethesda, you know why Sony didn't rock up this year, right? It was because they didn't really have anything to show, and they didn't want to put on a really boring event. There's nothing wrong with that. Maybe you should have too, because you clearly had nothing to show other than mobile games, unless you really want that to be your thing moving forward. Like, Bethesda, are you just jumping into the mobile game market head first and this is your way of telling us? I really hate being negative when it comes to these events. Actually, I'm usually pretty easily influenced to just be excited no matter what. I mean, I loved Microsoft's even though most of it was just cinematic trailers, but there was something about Bethesda's and when we're gonna go through it that was just the, the so boringly droll and yet the audience loved every second of it human npcs are coming to fallout 76 <laughs> Now, I don't want to make any accusations without any proof, and I really don't have any and never will, but that crowd was just way too amped up and hyped for the most mundane, boring announcements. I mean, there was a moment, there was many moments, where someone on stage wouldn't even finish saying just a generic sentence that wasn't even about anything, and the crowd seemed to just go insane over it. All new custom jewelry system. Something felt really off. Almost like Bethesda either paid people off or it was just filled with Bethesda game devs and publishers that were really showing their support. And for those that maybe didn't see it or maybe was only like half paying attention to it and you think I'm over exaggerating here, let me go through this thing, okay? Let me take you on a real ride of what most of us just experienced live. So the event started with just a montage of a bunch of people talking about how they got into gaming, which is fine. And then, you know, a few people took the stage, Todd Howard was in there, they talked about a bunch of stuff, honestly I can't really remember, and it was 10 minutes into the event before we actually saw a game. And it was a mobile game. It was Skyrim Blades, Elder Scrolls Blades, whatever it is they called it, being ported to Switch, and you know, if you know, if you told me there was going to be a game being ported to Switch in Bethesda's event, I would definitely perk up and look out for it. But Blades just, it is a game that looks like it belongs on mobile. It's not a game I think anyone was asking for to be on the Switch, but I mean, here it is, I guess. A mobile game. Technically now a console game. Yay! So that was the first 10 minutes. Now remember in Microsoft's, by 10 minutes in, we'd already been treated to about 20 games, but let's not compare, you know, apples and oranges and all that. I will say that having said that, the crowd is obviously still going insane and having a marvelous time. I did like that Todd Howard addressed the Fallout 76 situation and even said, yeah, they made a bunch of mistakes and they've listened to those mistakes and they're clearly trying to implement a lot of fixes. This new Wasteland pack that they have coming out looks Decent. I mean, they're finally adding in NPCs, which I think that was the loudest cheer from the entire event. And honestly, rightfully so, paid or not, yeah, good. They listen. They're putting in NPCs. They should have been there from the start. But here they are. There's also dialogue trees now and choices from right and wrong that actually bear consequences. Essentially, they have just made the game it should have been at the start, albeit it's still a very ugly, glitchy mess of a game, but it's a lot closer content wise to where it should have been on launch. And then they announced that uh, they're making a Fortnite 76, a Battle Royale Fallout, uh, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> poor, poor Johnny Cash is victim this time with his song being used, the burning ring of fire, because instead of a storm, they have a ring of fire. 
I mean, fine. It doesn't affect me. Doesn't change my life in any way that Fallout now has a Battle Royale mode. I kind of feel like it's just one of them things that they felt, oh, how do we get people to come back and play the game now that we added in the fixes? Well, how about pff, Fortnite? It's fine. No skin off my back. People went crazy for it. It's so definitely a 2018 move, but it's fine. And then there was a bunch more talking, and now we're about 25 minutes into this event, and so far all we've seen is a mobile game and Fortnite DLC, I mean Fallout DLC, and then we get shown Ghostwire. Uh, really cool looking game, uh, we, got, we got a bunch of gameplay for it, wait, sorry, I meant to say a cinematic trailer for it. It's set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe right after Thanos does his snap and now Hawkeye has to go around and figure out what the heck happened to everybody. Looks great. Hopefully we'll see some gameplay at some point. Um, yeah, that was that was that. Then we got another montage of the same people from earlier talking. The crowd loved it. They went insane. My older brother picked up Fallout 3 and I took his copy and played it when he wasn't home. Fallout 4. Yes. Let's take my baby. The scope of that game. Then they showed us some uh, Elder Scroll Online DLC content. Thankfully, it was game. No, that was also a cinematic trailer. That was, that, yeah, that was also a very, very long cinematic trailer. But it's okay because that same guy from the front row that's been screaming this whole event was screaming just as much during this. So that made it just, just so much better. Thank you. Yeah. And <laughs> This guy even screamed at a word. I'm not kidding you. Like, did the guy on the stage announce some other DLC that was coming later? We just gave us a name for it, Dragon something. I'm not sure. We didn't see any of it. We don't know about it yet. It's just DLC that's coming later. Just letting us know that he's working on it. So, of course, that guy in the front row screams like he just won a Ferrari and then found out there was a million dollars inside that Ferrari. Keep an eye out for a dungeon DLC adventure called Scalebreaker, which you'll yeah! see in August. A little bit of an over-exaggeration if you ask me. But thankfully, 40 minutes into this event, we got Commander Keen. Now, I loved Commander Keen when I was a kid. That pogo stick, it made me actually convince my parents to buy a pogo stick for me for Christmas. That's how much I loved Commander Keen growing up and hearing that they were doing a new one, just so excited. And then, um, yep, mobile game. And it's not even Commander Keen. Um... I don't know what this is. It's not It's not Commander Keen. It's using the skin of Commander Keen, I guess. And it's not that it's even not Commander Keen. Or it's not even the fact that it's a mobile game, honestly. It's the fact that it just looks trash. It doesn't look like a good game. Again, I hate being this negative, but this tell me this game looks good. When you have all of these really cool mobile games these days, you know, like Fallout Shelter is one of them. I mean, heck, Blades looks better than this, and both of those are from Bethesda. I mean, fun is subjective, but come on. On. It just looks like they didn't even try with this game. It was at this point where I lost it Like I actually forgot I was streaming and this face I was making is a hundred percent my face I don't think I said any words for a few minutes because I was just in shock at this Just really hoping around this point that it was going to pick up because so far it had been so boring And then a few minutes later after some more talking we were looking at another mobile game I can't believe it. Honestly, what is happening? What, are they serious? <laughs> then an actual good game took center stage, Rage 2. I like it. It's not the best game I've played in the last year, but it's definitely possible. Uh, we got shown some DLC for it. Some very average DLC, so that was that. Now we're 50 minutes in and this guy here feels the need to explain to us how co-op games work. Yes, Wolfenstein is going co-op. In Youngblood, you can still play by yourself, or you can partner with a pal to double up on shooting. Oh. Is that how co op video games Nazis. work? You can play it on your own as well? I didn't know. I've never Check played one before. Thanks for telling me. Didn't really need help there, buddy. We had that sorted. And that was for Wolfenstein Young Blood. They then showed us another cinematic slash gameplay trailer for that. It was like the third or fourth variations of trailer I have seen for that game now. So it, it felt kind of stale. Like as excited as I am for it, you know, 50 minutes into this thing, I don't really care. Oh, but they did have a VR mode for Wolfenstein now, which, you know, that's cool. I mean, Doom had VR and that was actually really fun. So I'm down for trying that in the Wolfenstein universe, except you're in a mech. So it's not actually Wolfenstein in VR, it's just a mech game in VR. Well, if you like mech games, then that's great. If you like Wolfenstein games, then not so much. 
Uh, then there was a game with a really cool concept, Death Loop. Uh, I got a got a got a pretty cool um, cinematic trailer, so I guess there's not much more I can say about that. It was the most original thing they showed, and hopefully it's good. So now we're an hour into the event. There's about 20 minutes left, um, and they're talking about Onion or Orion. I don't really remember. I was braiding my hair at this point. I had completely checked out, honestly. And I think it's a streaming service of some kind. It's supposed to be faster than other streaming services. That's cool. That's cool, Bethesda. Stream some mobile games, I guess. And after playing with my cat for a while, uh, they showed us some Doom, which is uh, Bethesda's big game. Well, not Bethesda. I mean, it's not Bethesda's game. I mean, neither is Wolfenstein, really. I mean, they didn't really make that. Um, they didn't actually make a lot of these games. They made Fallout 76, though. They made that. And they made Blades. What else did they make? Not much of this did they make. Anyway... We're on Doom at this point, and uh, it looks good, it looks great. Yeah, it looks exactly like the other things we've seen of this game. It looks pretty much like the last one, and the last one was fantastic, don't get me wrong. I am super excited for this Doom. There's a bunch of quality of life improvements, I can already tell. A bunch of really awesome niceties they've added to it, and extra, you know, guns and moves and swinging around and stuff. It definitely looks like the last game, but like on steroids, and I cannot wait to dive into it. And we got a release date for it, so... Yeah, that's great. I'm still really excited for that after seeing it before and seeing it again now. Another time, another time I'm seeing it. Not the first time, just another time. Really cool looking, really good, really good game. By not Bethesda, but it's good. It's a great game. I'm excited for. And that's an hour and 20 minutes. Um, it was mostly mobile. I feel really bad. Um, that I, that I, that I'm being so negative. I hate doing it, um, and I hate that I didn't enjoy the event, because I feel like there's always gonna be someone out there that likes it. There's always gonna be someone that, like, loved it, and like, maybe even a fan of mine that likes what I do, and hearing me talk like this about it is just upsetting and hurts their feelings, and that sucks. That's why I hate doing it. Um, but I honestly, as I said in my stream, I don't feel like this event was for anyone. I don't feel like this event made anyone happy. I don't think any hardcore mobile gamers are watching E3, Bethesda at E3, waiting for the next mobile game announcement. And if you already like, you know, Doom and Wolfenstein and you were just there for like new games or those, you're probably still feeling like, why did I have to watch so much mobile stuff? Like, I don't feel like this was for anyone. And I struggle to believe that anyone thinks this was a good conference or had a good time or found it necessary or wasn't bored. And I struggle to believe that this crowd had the amazing roller coaster of a time that they were maybe paid to sound like they did have. So while I still feel bad, I don't feel all that bad because I don't think I'm upsetting too many people in saying this. I mean, the dislikes are already rolling in on the videos. The overarching opinion I've seen online is very either eh or what the heck was that. And I think it's just concerning for Bethesda as a company because they're not having a great run right now. Again, with the Fallout stuff, it didn't really paint a great image, doesn't really put them in a good position with gamers, and now this is kind of just doubled down on the, what are you doing Bethesda? Like, are you a mobile company now? Are you all just about microtransactions? I mean, that's essentially what Fallout was, microtransactions, it's what mobile games are, microtransactions, like, where's your head at? Is it just money? Is it just, like, those quick buck games that you can, like, scrape up as quick as possible, it doesn't matter how bad they look, looking at you, Commander Keen, as long as you make money off of them and then use that money to pay people to sound excited. Again, just an accusation, I don't actually know if that's true, but is that what you're all about now? Games that make you as much money as possible because Honestly, that's a short-lived experiment. I mean, you might make a quick cash grab for the first year or two, but you would have made a lot more if you just stayed the reliable gaming company we've known and loved for years. Also, as I predicted, yeah, you announced Starfield and Elder Scrolls 6 way too early, and the m they got to mention this year. You mumbled their names at the start, and that was it, because you're not ready. You know, like, you're not, that's classic Metroid Prime 4 move right there. You weren't ready to even show it a year later. I mean, apart from Fallout 76, which was disappointing, those were your big things from last year, too, so... Last year, looking back, it wasn't even as good as it seemed at the time. Tomorrow is Square Enix and someone else. Sorry for being a Debbie Downer. I honestly feel like I have never been bored, that bored, 
in an E3 presentation before. There's usually always something, and that had nothing. I hope you, uh, I hope you agree. I hope you don't strongly disagree, but if you do, you, you know, feel free to let me know. Each to their own, I guess. Like this video, hit flip on that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the notification bell as well, because this whole weekend's gonna be crazy. Don't want you to miss out. Hopefully crazy. Hopefully crazier than what just happened. If, it, if, if it's downhill from here, oh boy. It all ends with Nintendo, so whatever happens, we have that to look forward to. Alright guys, it's getting late. I gotta make this and go to bed. Bye. Ha ha ha.